Good morning everyone. Well this is a uh, tracker update take two. Unfortunately we had a bad uh, mobile internet connection and also a Wi-Fi one to the base station so uh, we've now come back into the office and let's hope this one goes live and keeps streaming. Sorry about the frustrations for everyone was watching although I was surprised there were a few watching because at the same time it was the finish of the rum road with the uh, two Altum trimarans coming through having averaged 24 knots across the Atlantic and uh, the leader was uh, passed just about seven minutes before the finish. So uh, an epic finish, finish to the route de Rum and um, uh, be incredible watching these Altums sail solo non-stop around the world next year, um, trying to uh, better the current 42 day record, gonna be quite something. So for now, uh, everything across the fleet is very stable. Uh, the weather's stable, everything looks good. So we'll come to the back end here and uh, talk about our two tail enders uh, and also Suhaili. You can see Suhaili up here headed past Albany looking for a freighter and uh, very soon she'll uh, head across to the uh, west, uh, heading in towards back straight, uh, to the east, sorry, heading in towards Bass Strait. And Suhaili is currently about 800 miles ahead of uh, Mark Sinclair, just here in the middle. So uh, uh, quite interesting to see Suhaili rocketing away. Had a quick chat to Robin the other day, and he said um, better put some money on Suhaili <laughs> to uh, see where she finishes up at the end. So um, Mark uh, Sinclair is having a bit of fun chasing down Suhaili right now. Poor old Igor down the back here, uh, lucked out with a, not much wind. So you can see there's a big blue areas there. He's only doing uh, 1.1 knots right now. And uh, Mark, Mark's doing okay. Um, he's doing 3.8 knots in reasonably light winds, I suppose. And they've both actually come a bit further south, which is good. They're getting towards the 40th parallel here, which is where they should be. I'm always happier because I'm quite certain it'll get them uh, to Hobart a lot quicker. So we'll just scale the weather forward so we don't have to go back and forwards because as you know, the fleet is um, incredibly stretched out. So if we just push forward a day here um, and you'll see um, Mark in the middle is uh, gonna be uh, in light wind still. Igor's gonna be a little, little bit stronger northerly so he'll start moving a bit. We come forward another day uh, again. Um, Mark is gonna take off. He'll have some nice northwesterlies there to keep going. Good sailing and poor old Igor, he'll be right on the edge of it. Um, <laughs> strangely, there's a bit more new, uh, breeze above him than, uh, than down here on the 40th. There's uh, not much wind at all. So he's got some more frustrations but at least there's no storms. Push forward another day. And um, now you get Mark is coming into a, uh, uh, an area of very light winds. So they're not gonna make big progress in the next three, four days. Pushing it forward again, another day or, two, day or so. Still, um, you know, okay breezes. That's gonna be a southerly for Igor. He'll, he'll make some progress on that. But certainly they're only gonna be talking 80 mile days or something, not 120 mile days. Push forward again, couple of days, no storms. Uh, plenty of light winds scaling back. You can see it's still a very mild systems everywhere. You know, nothing of any definitive nature that's gonna cause a problem or give them good sailing. So uh, anyway, at least they'll be making progress slowly but surely towards Hobart. So, um, and by the way, Mark is saying he thinks he'll be in Hobart somewhere around the 5th of December. I'd say somewhere between the 5th and the 10th. So let's wait and see how it pans out as he gets a bit closer. Um, so now the, uh, this is the fun department. Uh, we've got Uku over here, Susie, uh, Istvan and Tapio. I might be able to upgrade that one more and get them all in. We can, but I'll, um, then you can't see too much of what's happening. So uh, I'll scale back the weather to today. Um, so Tapio, happy to be out there. He's uh, reading plenty of books if you're following his messages, which will go up shortly. Um, Celine's just translating all of those from the weekend. Jane and I were on the plane, of course. We couldn't uh, get them there. So I, I think you'll see the messages come up on Facebook in another hour. Uh, and uh, yeah, you'll see Tapio's having a great time reading some good books and uh, enjoying the ride. Isfan's on the hunt, of course. He's making 6.1 knots at the moment on the hunt for Susie. And look at this, Susie's parked up and there's not a lot of distance between them. I think it's only about, let's just measure that distance. It's about 250 miles, I think it is. Um, and when one boat stops and the other keeps sailing, yeah, look at that, okay. So it's 245 miles that Istvan is separated from Susie. Susie wants to catch Uku, Istvan wants to catch Susie, and Tapio, well, he's headed in the same direction as uh, Istvan, but I know he's disappointed about his barnacles, so we'll just have to see what happens. Uh, Istvan's got a few barnacles, nowhere near as many as uh, Tapio, of course, and Susie's uh, looking okay. So um, let's just uh, go back to the weather now and see 
see what's going to happen for these guys in the next uh, few days. Here we go. Okay, so we'll come forward a day. Uh, and it's uh, Tapio like that. It's got a good northerly. Northerlies bring smooth seas and uh, plenty of wind, so you'll see him pick up to six knots or so maybe. And uh, Istvan's still got a nice breeze. Susie's still parked. Now, if Istvan makes uh, five knots or so, he could pull out 100 miles. That puts him about 150 miles behind Susie, uh, which is interesting. Coming forward again, we go up to the uh, 14th. Uh -huh. Uh, Istvan's going to be happy with that, although he'll move out of this strong wind band and they don't usually hook around the corner, so you'll see him in this band here. And Susie's now got some breeze, so they'll hold their own there. Uh, Tapio's going to park up, be a good chance for him maybe, depending on the sea state. Let's just have a look at that. We'll check the seas to jump over the side. He's certainly ready, uh, showing two to three, that'll be two metre sea there. Still might be a boat bobbing around a bit much. So we'll go back to wind, but uh, he's keen at the first opportunity to get over the side and clear those barnacles or, or start the job. It's quite a big job. Um, so, uh, okay, so that's the 14th. That's two days ahead. We'll go three days, uh, 15th. Tapio's still in a hole. Susie's going to have lighter winds maybe than uh, uh, Istvan. And we'll go for uh, the 16th now. So four days. Oh. Hang on, I've got to get rid of this thing now. Um, go there. Uh, okay. Um, and uh, yeah, she's she's going to be... Oh, we've lost it there. We'll go back to the sixth, 15th here. Let's see, 15th, uh, still in a hole. 16th, oh boy, too much other junk coming up. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, this fan's going to slow down a bit here because he'll have headwinds, light headwinds. Susie will have a southerly. Uh, so that could make a bit of difference as well. And Tapio's got to get through this band here. The, 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 we'll just jump again. There's no storms coming. That's the big thing. So certainly very pleasant sailing for the for these guys. There's uh, no surprises there. So we'll come up to Uku. I'll just drop in the no-go zone here. You can see he's nearly around the corner. We'll come back to um, real-time weather today. It's too far ahead to hunt for Mark. He's way ahead of uh, Uku. But he's only, Uku's only making 1.4 knots. And he uh, sent a message saying it's complete glass out, uh, smooth seas, uh, and he's not complaining. <laughs> he kind of enjoys it, but it gets a bit frustrating after a while. He's also got a huge amount of barnacles. It'd be a good time maybe to get over the side, but Uku doesn't like getting in the water. So he's probably going to wear those barnacles all the way home, which is amazing. So we'll come forward a day, um, all good sailing the day, two days, uh, same again. He will be making progress, nothing fast, but it'll be steady. I'd say he's going to be making fours and fives very shortly. Uh, all the way through. Uh, there's a bit of a light one, light headwinds there. He'll be over here at that stage. Well, not headwinds, southeasterly, so he'll be on starboard tack. And again, pushing through, that's nice sailing. He'll enjoy that. And so there's no storms at all. So we'll come back to today's weather, push over here to Mark. You can see he got close to the zone over here, um, but uh, uh, Mark's doing okay. And for now, yeah, his tracker stopped. His tracker stopped about a bit over, uh, a, bit over a day ago. Uh, or no, not quite a day. So it's the 16th UTC. So uh, we've sent him a message and asked him why. Um, get him to check the power system design, check he's okay. We're not too concerned. We got a message from him 24 hours ago and we just received a call this morning to say that he is talking to ham operators. So he's on board and everything's sweet. But for some reason, we've uh, lost his tracker back at 1600 hours on the 11th. So his progress will be a little bit further ahead of that now. So we'll forget about what he's doing speed wise and just look at the, air, the weather in the general area of Mark for now. And certainly uh, this is a day ahead. There's no big storms. Again, looks like he's going to be having a good run here. Yep, following breezes or southerlies. That's, this is three days ahead. Fantastic stuff. He's going to make some serious ground here. Um, this is just pushing ahead. He's got enough breeze to keep sailing, keep sailing well. So he'll be driving hard. As you know, he's on the hunt for Jean-Luc. So, um, so no surprises for uh, Mark in the next uh, seven days, if that holds true. I'll just bounce this back and we'll come across and look at Jean-Luc. Now this gets really interesting. I couldn't sleep last night with jet lag, so I was up a few times watching what's happening. And around midnight, so it's about 10 hours ago, um, 
there was, uh, well, let's look at what we've got, and I'll tell you what I thought was happening. I thought Jean-Luc's about to be clobbered by a couple of big blows going around Cape Horn, a long way in the distance. But for now, he's doing really well, uh, making five knots, heading in a southwesterly direction. Um, we'll zoom back and look at where he's got to go towards Cape Horn. Um, here's a waypoint. He's got to leave that to port, so he, he's going to head down in this direction, and there's Cape Horn, of course. That's where he wants to get around as quick as he can. Um, he did climb the mast a couple of times. You probably read that in the post. He's stabilised the rig. There was no damage on the second spreaders, but um, uh, the, the, uh, lower, the bulk holding the lowers, that was the issue. He's managed to tighten riggings and uh, stress it without overloading the bulk. And he seems to be reasonably happy, but he's taking it quietly as we speak. Not going to push too hard. Um, oh, while we're talking of this, um, Mark Slats has taken out over 400 miles on the distance between uh, between Jean-Luc and his own position. Let's just do a measure on that. Um, okay, so he's 1,600 nautical miles east to west. Previously, he was over 2,000 miles. So uh, Jean-Luc got pushed north and got delayed coming south because of his rig problems. So um, Mark is definitely on the hunt, and it's a great race now because he's got a long way to go. Um, Jean-Luc's got clipped wings, but he'll sail as hard as he can. And uh, let's see uh, how long before they start to seriously converge. Anyway, uh, we'll come back to Jean-Luc and look at the weather here. So we'll go forward a day, uh, we'll go forward a day to the 13th. Um, he's gonna get a southwesterly, that's fine for where he wants to go. On the 14th, um, got a following breeze, so he'll be down here making good time. Uh, not big winds, so the sea will be okay. On the 15th, um, that's day three, he's got another southerly, so he'll be doing a step zigzag course. Um, he won't want to be pounding to windward or anything, so he'll be um, keeping on the beam or just a little bit close reaching. So that's day three. Uh, we'll go into day four. Uh, okay, and he's got a following breeze. Northwesterly, the sea doesn't get up, so that's kind of cool. Uh, that's four days in advance. He'd be liking that, so by then he's coming down here somewhere. Uh, he'll be making 100 mile days by the look of this. This is a couple of days into it. Now this was, in fact, I've skipped a bit far. This was one of the blows that looked, oh, this was one of the blows that was coming across right in line. Now, um, 10 hours ago, this was, a, this was twice the size as they were predicting. Huge blue areas, which are 60 to 70 knot winds, gusting to 70, 60 to 70, um, bigger seas, but it's changed its potential straight away. You can see the basis here of turning into a tight low, and that was actually developing in a completely different way. So because it's now changed, and bearing in mind this is the 17th uh, and it's now the 12th, this is five days in advance, let's hope that this uh, uh, still keeps decreasing in intensity rather than increasing. They've, they've backed it back. As the day gets closer to the real weather, it'll become more accurate, but five days ahead is still a long way. And then the worst part was that if we come forward another day, it's the 18th, there was a monster blow coming across on the 19th, but by the look of it, it's completely disappeared. This was projecting to be a huge one, and I was starting to think, oh, oh we're gonna to have to give a weather alert here, but it was, you know, we only do that about three or four days out. But the good news is it's broken apart. So, so too early to predict here and now, uh, Jean-Luc is actually having a great ride and uh, making the most of uh, pleasant sailing conditions and going as fast as he can to La Sable de Lome. So we're back into a routine now, and that means we'll do another live uh, English live update on Wednesday morning. Um, and then uh, we'll do another one on Saturday morning uh, before the English question and answers. And Christoph will do a, uh, a live update on the tracker and weather. Uh, later on, we'll get in, back into that weekly routine and uh, the same with the questions and answers. So uh, look forward to seeing you then. Enjoy the ride and thanks a lot. Bye.